Hey everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a, a great day. I am not going to be long. It's been a very long and trying day for me. Um, and I've just been getting a lot of inboxes and emails. Um, a lot of people were asking the basic gist of the question is, do I still have the same stance on the importance of the black family? And I'm certain that a lot of that is coming from my own personal situation. And uh, I'm gonna uh, start talking about the family more. You know, I needed some time to deal with where I'm at. Uh, I'm human. Um, and I have went through uh, and am going through probably the most difficult time of my life uh, just for so many different reasons. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the air real quick so we can get this out of the way. I'm never going to say anything uh, out of line about my wife uh, even when she becomes my ex-wife uh, and that's in the making uh, there'll still be nothing negative number one is because as far as I'm concerned she will still be the mother of my children even though they're not my biological children they are my children I've spent seven years uh, in their developmental years with them and so they're my babies not as big babies anymore, but they were all one just turned 13 up. The rest of them were 11, 9, um, the younger ones. And so that's how I'm handling this. I have nothing but love for my family. Uh, things happen. Um, I trust God and I will continue to believe and trust God. And I believe in love. I believe in marriage. I believe in the black family more than I ever had. And now I'm going to tell you why. If you want to destroy a people, you attack the family. If you want to attack the family, you attack the marriage. The marriage is the first the first dual institution or multiplicity of uh, uh, an institution of multiplicity. Because I, I believe that the individual itself, because we function as an entity, is also an institution. Uh, some people would disagree and, and, and they're welcome to, but the first institution of multiplicity is the marriage. And the marriage is the foundation for the family. And the family is the place where values, interests, and principles that govern the future and set forth pathways is created. A lot of the things that we talk about that should be building blocks and strong suits within the black community that we struggle in is supposed to be taught to children and inculcated into their minds starting at two, three, four, five, six years old through a, a series of processes from observance, uh, modeling, uh, speech, uh, and, 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 and oral teaching. It's immensely important. If you look around anywhere, if you go back to our history in Africa, if you look at other groups, this is the time that you're developing the mindset, you're developing the self-image, you're developing the self-concept, you're teaching them respect, you're teaching them an identity, a self-assurance, a self-love, uh, of demanding the most of themselves. You're setting the standard on what they expect from themselves. You're setting the standard on what they're going to expect and, and demand of themselves in the future. You are 
teaching them the importance of owning a business, teaching them the importance of properly managing money, teaching them the importance, if they are male, of respecting the female within their in their lives. If they're female, you're teaching them the importance of knowing who they are so they're not misguided, misled, or overwhelmed when someone plays them, pays them a compliment, or someone disses them, or you know, or calls them out of their name, or says that they're not beautiful or attractive or smart or whatever, that they know how to handle it because they know who they're. All of this stuff is done in the family. The family, the marriage is more than just about emotion. It's more than just about sex. Those things are necessary. They are part of the process. But what we miss when we talk about marriage, when we talk about black love, when we talk about the black family, we miss the important role that we play in the projection of the right ideals, the right mindset, the right practices. Um, and that is where we're missing. So when, when I'm asked, do I believe in love, black love, do I still think it's immensely important to the black community? I absolutely, absolutely, 100%. Um, it's necessary, it's, it's, it's imperative. I think that we don't see it. You know, in 1972, we went from uh, the burden of proof in getting a divorce being higher. Uh, I'm not one for being in a relationship where you are abused. I'm not one, and I mean in any way. I mean, I'm not at one for being in a relationship where you are not respected, where you're not cared for, where your needs are not being met. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about sitting in something where there's no give and, and there's no reciprocity and there's no, no deep caring, there's no concern, there's no energy, no effort to making things better. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you can simply say, that you have reached a point of irreconcilable differences or insupportability, which I think is a, 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 an interesting word because when you look up the word and you study the word, you'll find that the only place it's used is in court, primarily in divorces. And it basically is another way of saying irreconcilable difference, but it's saying that you've reached a point where no other options are available in saving the marriage, but there's no point of proof. It's just you saying it. And it's nothing challenging you to try to figure out how to work it out. Uh, divorces, uh, the divorce rate in the church is actually higher. So that's not the place that's going to be pushing uh, uh, love and, 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 and marriage and family. And I, when I talk about this whole thing, I'm not just talking about the marriage. I'm talking about the entire spectrum of what the marriage produces and why it's so important. And it's because it's the foundation for the family. It's where everything rests. And you have, uh, especially in the black community, 75% of our children, uh, I heard the number is getting a little better, but 75% of our children, uh, somewhere up in there, are in single parent households. Born into them, uh, which is crazy. Uh, the numbers are improving because we're getting a little bit more blended families. Uh, and there are challenges that come with that. And if you don't understand how to deal with those challenges, that becomes a problem. And most people don't know how to deal with it because most people are bringing emotional baggage that they're pretending they don't have. Uh, one of the things that this has done for me is it's grown me up in a lot of ways of just knowing how to approach things, knowing how to be invested in things, knowing how to listen, uh, um, and not being to a point where you just simply think, hey man, it's here, we'll figure it out. But here's the thing, so you have all of this going on, then you insert social media. Social media has put the entire world in your business. And anybody that has followed me for any time, especially before this breakup, knows the, the platform I placed my wife on, uh, how much I held her in high regard, uh, how I spoke of her. Uh, and that's how I thought about her, and that's how I've always dealt with her. Um, and the problem is you're putting people, when you do that, you don't think about it, but you're putting people in, in your relationship. And then on the flip side, when you are a person that's voicing all of your discord, again, you're putting people and energy into your relationship 
that your relationship may not be at a place that it can take. And I think that one of the problems that we are having is that now also what social media does, social media allows you to peer into the yards of other people. And so now when you're going through a rough period and you look over and see what Kathy's doing and Kathy's got or, or Brian is doing and Brian's got and you sit up and say, man, you know, my wife doesn't do that. My my wife doesn't treat me like my wife doesn't say that. My husband doesn't do that. My husband sucks at that. And now you're measuring your situation against someone else's without knowing the entire story because they're presenting what they want you to see. And that's social media in a nutshell. You're getting what someone wants you to see. And nobody is going to get out there and say, man, I'm broken man, you know, my wife loves me, but I'm giving her the business. You know, I'm cheating on my wife and I'm doing all these things. Nobody's going to say my husband loves me, but I'm mean to him. I, I'm disrespectful to him. Nobody's saying that. They're giving you what they want you to see because everybody needs to be seen as a success because that's the push of social media. And what is happening is nobody's working on healing. Nobody's working on what true love is. And that's another thing with me when people talk about love. Love to me isn't... Love to me isn't um, emotion. And if you remember, what I, what I used to always say is, I don't handle my wife based on my feelings. You know, it's not that I didn't have strong feelings for I did, but everybody gets upset. Everybody has frustration. Some days you're looking at a situation going, this is some BS, you know, whatever. And if you act on that, you're going to have these moments where you look back and you said stuff that you didn't mean. Uh, you treated a person in a way that you didn't mean to treat them. And so what my goal was, was when I'm not happy, when I'm, up, I'm upset, I'm going to go out of my way to try to treat her the same way I've always treated her or better. You know, if I carry your bags out to the car every day, when you're leaving to go to the gym or to work, I'm going to carry your bags out when we're not on the same page and I'm going to give you a hug and give you a kiss the same way. I'm going to try to talk to you again. I'm not perfect and I'm not trying to put myself out there like I got it all together. What I'm trying to tell you is to me, love is an action. Love is how you respond to me when things aren't going the way that you think they should go. And we're in a world where everybody's behaving based off of their feelings. And they don't understand the gravity of what's at stake. They don't understand that this isn't just about having somebody you sleep next to. This isn't about uh, sitting up and, uh, you know, having a sex partner. This is about having somebody that you can build a future that projects out into your children's lives and into their children's lives and on and on. And you look down and after you're gone, you've laid a foundation where they are hard workers. They are critical thinkers. They are lat lateral thinkers. They are able to get outside the box and find solutions because you laid a foundation. You put positive uh, positive, and the key word is positive, uh, masculine and feminine energy in the house. And they were able to consume that and lean into it. And again, this isn't as easy as it sounds when I'm saying it. And I'm not, I don't want to pretend or lead you to believe that that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our children. We owe it to our people in the community to really look at how we view how we view that might have been my turn but I don't think so how we view um, marriage and relationships the level of gravity and sincerity and concern and energy and effort we put into sustaining relationships and so uh the simple answer to that question is I believe more now than ever in marriage. I believe more now than I ever have in the sanctity of it, in the necessity for it, and I will continue to do so. Um, so with
with that being said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. I'm trying to uh, get where I'm going. Uh, I'm almost there. But, yeah, I mean, for those people who have prayed for me and prayed for Marion, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and speak for her and, and say that she appreciates it and thank and is thankful for it. I definitely appreciate it and I'm thankful for it. And, you know, there's still a lot that has to be worked out just in the simple fact, like I said, uh, I'm not one to walk away from children uh, that I've parented. So the, the thing that I can look at is I want to make sure that in the long run they're okay. And I know from her perspective, she's going to do that. That's what she's always done. Um, and that's one of the things that drew me to her was just how hard in the paint she went for these kids uh, not having any help. So I know she's going to do that. But, you know, my thing is she's in a good position right now to do it. But that doesn't relieve me from what I believe is my responsibility to also be there. And so that's what I'm going to focus on. That's going to be where my mind is and to coach and to teach as many people as I possibly can to, if possible, and when it is within reason to find a way to work on things, to find a way to fix things and to do something. But well, no matter what, give value to the things that bring value. And I think we lose in that. But with that being said, look, um, you wake up every day, you get up, and you do what it is that you need to do to grow, to heal, to become better. Every day I wake up, that's my number one goal is to be better today than the guy that went to sleep the night before and it's work it's challenging uh, sometimes tedious sometimes painstaking but uh, it's the life I live it's the life that I'm proud of and I'm proud of the life I have uh, you know everybody wants things to go the way that they want them to go and life doesn't deal hands that way uh, so you take what you have and you sit up and say, hey, I'm going to pick myself up. I'm going to move. And that's where I'm at. I'm going to move forward and do everything in my power to be the best man I can be and treat everybody with the kindness, the love and the respect that um, I think that I want to receive from people. And that is so important to me. So to answer the question, absolutely. I believe in love. I believe in, I believe in black love with all my heart. I believe in uh, marriage. I believe in the black family. And I believe that they are integral to the empowerment of the black community. And I'm hoping at some point that we, we rediscover that and that we see the value in it. And I think it's important too uh, that we really give emphasis to how we enter into relationships. I'm probably more of an optimist uh, than my soon-to-be ex. Uh, I believe that most things non-abusive are fixable if both people want to fix them. But also if both people don't want to fix them, I don't think it's right to hold someone where they don't want to be. Uh, and I'll never be guilty of that. Um, you know, I'll step back and say, hey, go ahead, you know, do what you need to do, soar. I'm gonna step back, but I'm never gonna hold somebody because to me, that's not the relationship. The relationship has to be two people sitting up and saying, you know what, we're gonna get through this. And that's where it has to be. So. For all the people that's like sending uh, stuff like that and asking why all of a sudden I stopped, was it because of what I'm going through and everything? And to a certain extent it was. It's like, you know, when you have that type of passion and then you take that type of hit, uh, you know, your ego, you know, is saying, you talk all that noise, but, you know, what happened? Uh, you know, and I had to realize that 
there are so many things that can go wrong that are out of my control. There are so many things that can go wrong that I may have a hand in. And the thing is, I'm human and what, what, what has happened has happened. And I'm not saying that like, I, you know, I'm not worried about how somebody else feels about what happened. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I did in my mind what I could do at that time. And I'm going to be moving forward with my life um, because the world needs me. Uh, my children need me. Uh, the future needs me to be the best that I can be and I'm going to be the best I can be. Uh, so again, for those who prayed for me, prayed for the marriage when they found out what was going on, uh, prayed for Marion when they found out what was going on. Don't stop. Keep praying. Um, one thing that I know is needed right now is prayer because healing is also necessary. Um, and with that being said, look, I'm out of here. I am going to go in, uh, give me some fruit uh, for my snack with my meal, unwind, um, and enjoy my evening. On that note, I'm out of here.